video series. This is a car that you guys have been asking about for a long time. And the reality is it's been very hard for me to get because it's been very hard for you to get. This is the Hyundai Palisade Ultimate Calligraphy, a really long name for a really fantastic vehicle. So this is the thing, these are hard to get and some of you may have to buy this car without seeing it in person. And my hope is that this video will give you everything you need to see in order to make a comfortable purchase decision because we go in depth here, that's what we do. So if you've never watched one of our reviews before, they're usually about a half an hour long. If we go longer, we're either answering your live questions to this or we're going a little off topic sometimes after that 30 minute mark, but we're gonna spend at least 30 minutes with this car and we're gonna give you every bit of detail that we can so you can learn something that the other reviews aren't showing you and you can be comfortable in your purchase or just be a fan of a vehicle and learn a whole lot more. So. In the next three minutes, up until the three minute mark, if you're watching and you're not live with us, you can skip ahead to that three minute mark. We're just gonna let our live audience build right now. And uh, as they do, they'll ask some questions and they'll give us some likes, hopefully. And uh, if you wanna join us, we do this every single weekday. We've got a whole bunch more stuff coming out very soon. Uh, I'll show you how to join us right now. So you go to our YouTube page. We're changing this look right up here uh, for now, but we're just keeping that. So you will find us very quickly. Uh, just refresh the page. And if you do that exactly at two o'clock Eastern time, you're gonna see our live video every weekday up here. So it will be live unless I'm on vacation and there will be some vacation this summer. I'm gonna click into that live video and it's gonna show you an ad and I'm gonna run a quick ad for myself here. If you are uh, in Ontario and you wanna buy one of these vehicles, whether it's a Kia or a Hyundai, uh, when this video is done and it's posted, just connect with me. There'll be a link below this video in the description. Connect with me, I will hook you up with our sales team. I will make sure that they take care of you the way I would take care of you myself. So we're gonna skip that ad and I'm gonna show you down here. Sometimes it shows, hey, it's working. All right, it's gonna show me, perfect. So we got a couple people on there. We got a couple people saying hello. Feel free if you're here for the first time to say hello. And uh, also, if you don't mind dropping a like uh, throughout the video, I hope I have, don't have to earn it too hard. I'll do my best though. Uh, what's going on in the next little while? Well, we've got uh, the Kia, no, sorry, yeah, the Kia Sportage. I've got all these names mixed up, mixed up in my head now. Kia, Sport, Kia Sportage or Sportage uh, coming out uh, next, actually overnight, I guess, uh, the 8th, so tomorrow officially. I'm not sure what time zone that comes out, but we'll cover that of course as well. And somebody says, hi, first visit. Hey, nice to have you here. Uh, so Kia Sportage, we will cover that probably tomorrow based on when I can see that video. We'll talk about what we know, what we don't know. Uh, I can tell you that an interesting thing in the Kia lineup is the Kia Sorento will be coming PHEV. It's going into production very soon. And it's gonna be also a hybrid. So plug-in hybrid and hybrid on that vehicle coming very soon. We're already at that three minute mark. So let's get going here. Let's jump across to what people actually came to see. Here we go. Hyundai Palisade. Now, of course, we were just the Kia channel for a while. Now we're the Kia Hyundai channel. So we've got a little bit more Kia content. And I've talked about the Telluride a lot. And there will be some Telluride comparisons here. What I did not do is throw a Telluride in the bay with this because this video, this vehicle deserves its own video. And it is phenomenal. Now, I will say from the side, the Telluride sometimes gets confused for a bit of a Land Rover, Range Rover. This I can see a little bit of maybe Escalade lines in here a little bit. I will tell you that in person, this ultimate calligraphy version looks fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is start with showing you the key so that I can put it in my pocket and never touch it again. Lock, unlock, remote start, and the hold button for the trunk to open. Also that hold button for the alarm. We're gonna throw that in our pocket. Now I will say if you want something like the trunk to open or if you want something like the doors to be locked or the remote start to happen, you also have Hyundai Blue Link. That is a cell phone app where you can work, be basically anywhere in the world and uh, your vehicle can do a number of things including remote start, preheat, turn on the seat, uh, I believe the seat heaters, uh, turn on the steering wheel heater, that kind of stuff. So that is an option on this car, or that is a standard on this car. And again, we're showing you the top line version. So there are many trims lower than this. All of these are all wheel drive. We'll talk about that system. I promise you, I will share something about the all wheel drive system that you haven't heard in any other video. And we'll also um, talk about um, the front wheel drive. It has a front wheel drive model, but really what we're gonna do is look at the luxury of this model. We can pull a future, in the future, we'll pull a lower trim line in here and show you just the features. So. Unique wheels on this trim line, very cool in person. Sometimes wheels really don't show well on camera, but you can kind of see like there's an interior design here and right in there. And then there's kind of an exterior design. It looks really sharp, but it's got some depth, it's got some character. So really sharp look there. I like that. Those are 20 inch wheels on this model. A lot of lighting going on here. We're gonna turn them on later. Got a lot of glare here. So we'll show you that later in the vehicle. A unique grill here 
on the Ultimate Calligraphy version. So I don't know if you've seen the other grill, but this is a unique version. So if you're thinking, hey, I'm gonna go get the Ultimate Calligraphy, but it's kind of just the same, you do have a step up here. And I will say really quickly, this is a demo model that I have for basically one hour and I have to return it because they have a vehicle showing on this. So I haven't even cleaned this properly. There are gonna be some bugs on here. There, uh, it's not detailed the way I would like it to be detailed. But in the lighting here, just again, detail is the key of the game, the key to the game here. And you can see full LED system. It's a Hyundai logo in there. And uh, just a lot of little details that just kind of stand out. And again, we'll turn those lights on a little bit later. One of the details that I always point out on some of these vehicles, or I try to point out on some of these vehicles, they're starting to do this more and more. The door around here, you can see it kind of wraps around there. A lot of doors end here, but it's got that extra panel on it. What that extra panel does is it actually protects all of this from getting dirty. You can see that car is not perfectly clean, but here it seems to be perfectly clean. And what that does is when you get out of here, passenger seats power, when you get out, you're, if you're a shorter person, especially your leg may touch that wall. Uh, it'll stay clean in those winter months, especially Canadian winter months where you have that um, sand and salt and grit. Uh, it wraps right around the outside door, so that stays clean. So as you're getting out of a taller vehicle, you're not going to get your pant legs dirty. Another little attention to detail thing. I always talk about the roof racks up top. I'm a kayaker. I like camping. These are really helpful for taking things along. But you'll notice here, a lot of time they used to have sort of the front cap piece and then a split in the, in the roof rail. And then they put another split back here in the roof rail. And you'd really only be able to use the center section. These are really long spread roof rails. So if you're ever taking kayaks or canoes or something long where you want a lot of spread, even a ski box where you want a lot of spread between the bars, you can do that here with these roof rack bars. Coming along the back side, we don't, I don't know if I pointed out on the front, I guess I didn't. There are backup beepers on the back here. There are the same things on the front. So we're gonna talk about parking this car. It's a bigger vehicle for some people than they've had before. You seat eight people, or you can seat eight people. This one's a seven seater. Uh, this one has the 360 camera. This one has backup beepers front and rear. So of course they will beep at you. It will um, progressively, uh, uh, it'll show you in the dash kind of thing where things are closer and farther away. Down here, the only lights down there are your backup lights in the center. The rest of these are reflectors. All the rest of your lights are up here. And this is not a light, although it does look like a light in person. It is a highly detailed panel. You can see sort of metallic in there, in the silver and the extra low lines. And that's what you notice is the closer you spend, the more time you spend on this vehicle, the closer you look at it, there is detail after detail after detail that really, really impresses. So we're gonna jump inside right now. Of course, the keyless entry, push button start, you just tap this button and it would unlock the doors or unlock all the doors. You've got down here the best seat that we make. It is uh, a Kia Hyundai staple when they put it in a great car. So first of all, this piece right here, see that piece right there? That's long. And if you're a shorter driver, that's gonna to be too long for you. If you're a taller driver, you finally have a seat that fits you correctly. So you can move that in or out like this. Of course, a normal power seat and a power lumbar that goes up, down, or in and out. Now, what I noticed is it's a fairly slow move up and down. Comes in and out quite a long ways, much more than many other vehicles. But that movement slowly up and down means you can pr place the lumbar precisely where you want it. And sometimes on a long trip, you may be able to move a little bit. You can adjust it just a hair up or down. And of course, they are memory seats here as well, which you can see right there, memory seats. The big thing in this interior is, this isn't gonna show on video, but it's definitely a bit of a wow factor here. You get a lot of texture, a lot of just different style seats, different things. Even the airbag label is a leather tab. These are Napa leather seats and so just, everything you feel and touch it feels nice it looks nice it's got some character it's got some texture and it's really high-end feeling kind of futuristic maybe compared to something like the telluride telluride makes do with a lot of wood in here here you've got more leather more metallic looking uh things and in some cases probably metallic actually metal uh, but even the the area here more detail. It's not going to show great on camera but it has a texture as well as a pattern to it everything you feel and touch just is kind of just genuine, it feels real. Uh, now this looks like a, um, well, it doesn't look like wood, it does look like metallic. Again, you have to see it, it's very, very smooth to the touch, but again, it has a pattern in it, hard to show in this lighting, the LED lighting that we have in this video bay. You can see things a little differently outside. Jumping inside, maybe that's a better view of the metallic, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. I'll do my best to show you what I can. Overall, let's take a look just inside here, going across, this is nice soft touch. So it's not hard, it's nice, uh, 
you know, you can almost hear when I'm touching it, it's not uh, soft. Now you have what some people say is a controversial look, I think is a very practical look, and it's what Hyundai's doing in a lot of their vehicles. You have this huge space underneath, so if you're the kind of person who likes to carry a purse around, you've got some space underneath there. 12 volt and USB port down there, so you can charge devices and put other things down there. And that creates a very clean look here. Let's just turn the vehicle to the on position, get a few things turned on, but a very clean overall look here. The push button start, uh, or push button gearing, sorry, is, uh, let's turn the climate system off for now. Push button gearing here is uh, very easy because it's reverse neutral drive, easy to figure out, but it gives you a very clean open look and then it gives you the multi-drive and terrain modes. We're gonna talk about that all wheel drive system in a minute here when we come through. We'll just do a quick overview for right now before we go into the details. Ventilated seats, which I'm gonna leave on right now. It's very warm in here, but you also have rump roasters or heated seats. Heated steering wheel, of course. This is all kind of typical stuff in a class like this. I will show you the backup camera while we're here because, oh, maybe it won't work. Do I have to turn the car on? Oh no, I hope I don't. Yes, I have to turn this car on because electronic shifting. So backup camera is a 360 camera. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, there's your backup beepers we talked about, hill descent control, auto stop start. And of course, this is a nice system too, this uh, auto climate control system. It is a tri-zone system. It defaults to the two on, we can turn the rear one on as well. Uh, when we turn the rear one on, it gives you the option of coming up here to the screen and hitting the auto. So that's why it wasn't coming on immediately. And it has a clean air function. So we're gonna turn all the fans, oops, all the fans down. I'm looking through my screen instead of looking through my uh, uh, area. The rear air will also turn that uh, fan control down. Oh, that's the temperature, there we go, fan control down. All right, there we go. So what you see is um, this clean air is what I was getting at. There's a, 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 there's a air filter in this car, like normal, cabin air filter, but there's also this clean air, which is an, uh, which is an ion filter. That ion filter is great for allergy sufferers. Uh, it takes some of the pollutants out of the air, it takes the allergens out of the air. It works quite well for someone like myself who has allergies and suffers from that. That's uh, pretty cool. So let's check out this drive and terrain mode. Comfort, eco, sport, and smart. How do you get there? You just dial this knob around. Sorry about the glare there. Uh, comfort, eco, sport, and normal, uh, or sorry, spar smart. And then if you can switch to terrain mode and go snow, mud, or sand. Now, I'll talk about an all-wheel drive sec in sec the all-wheel drive system in one second. Like I said, I'm gonna tell you more things about that than you've ever heard from anyone else. It's a really good system. The big thing is you don't have to put it in snow mode to get all-wheel drive traction. You will have all-wheel drive traction in any of these drive modes. It just changes and optimizes for various things. I personally like the smart mode the best. Um, a lot of people like uh, Comfort Sport, of course, uses a little bit more fuel, but does keep it fairly peppy. And then again, these are specific to the terrain you're on. You get in some mud and some sand, you want traction control, all-wheel drive system working a little differently than it would in snow or something else. So it gives you that ability to go to that cottage road, go down that camping area and uh, you know get down there easily no matter what the conditions are. Over here again, that push button start, so you'll or push button gearing, you'll notice you don't have any way to manually shift. So on something like a Telluride, you can top it, tap it to the left and shift up or down. Right here, you have the paddle shifters. I'm gonna turn the climate system off again so we keep the battery high in this vehicle. So you have paddle shifters here instead. If you wanna choose your own gears, you still can with a push button gear shift, you just use the paddle shifters. Down here, the smart cruise control you can see, uh, works very well and you've also got the audio controls there automatic um, climate over here oops that's uh, not automatic climate automatic climate was different automatic headlights over here and automatic uh, wipers over here so again automatic wipers are great because as the um, uh, rain picks up and slows down and as you pick up and slow down with the vehicle you will have great climate there now ignore that flickering that flickering is just the interaction of this large 12.3 inch display so uh, something like the Telluride only has a display in the center here. And what's cool is let's go back to those drive modes and switch them around. I'm in the smart mode right now. Let's go to sport mode. That's pretty cool. Changes up. You can read that a lot clearer in person than you can on the camera. Uh, change it over here again. We've now gone to the eco mode. Everything's a little bit more of a green tinge. Even the font changes on the speedometer on the left. And you can see the digital speedometer stays in the center there where a lot of our cars, they have it over here. What that does is it gives you this space to put whatever you want in there. And there really is whatever you want. There's a lot to show. I probably won't be able to show you everything in this video. Oops, I just turned the climate system on again. Uh, there's comfort mode. So again, eco back over here. You can just see it changed nice and slow. Just enough. I like the way the graphics are a little slow because it's you see the change. It's not just this big flash. It's kind of shows you everything. 
and uh, that's the smart mode. We'll leave it there for now. So a lot of cool features in there that I really quite like that makes sense. And then again, you step over here to another very large display screen, the 10 and a quarter inch display screen. You can swipe across here. You get sounds of nature, which I think is the silliest feature we have. I'm just kidding. Well, I mean, it's kind of silly, but HD radio data. Let's see if this works. Sometimes it works if I'm in here. Sometimes it doesn't. Doppler radar. Yeah, there you go. You can see a little bit of flurries in here, which makes sense. Or flurries, not flurries. Definitely not flurries. Rain showers in here, which makes sense. You can see there's some clouds in the sky. Some of them look a little uh, darker over that direction. And you can see you've got uh, radar in the general area here. This doesn't work perfectly when we're indoors, but it's showing up right now. So again, radar display right in your car, which is pretty cool. Traffic, HD traffic as well. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, of course, you would expect those and they are here. One of the things I like is passenger talk. Passenger talk right now, I don't know if you can hear the difference, but the front microphone will pick up the driver's voice and play it through the rear speakers. What that means is the microphones located right up here are playing through the rear speakers. So when I'm facing forward and wanting to talk to my rear passengers who are either sleeping, got their ear AirPods in, or they're just not paying attention to me, I don't have to raise my voice any more than I normally do to do a video to speak with them clearly. And of course they're facing us so they can speak to us clearly. Now you might say, okay, that's great. But um, what happens when I'm playing my radio and um, the kids in the back are listening to their AirPods or earbuds or whatever we want to call them, you can put it on quiet mode. So what quiet mode does is it automatically dims this audio system and it turns it off on the rear speakers and dims it to volume number seven in the front. Now you can still turn it up from there, but all the rear speakers will be off. And on a 12, system, a 12 speaker system, that's pretty cool. This has what's called Clarify Audio. Uh, we'll talk about that in one second. So the seven, when you turn this off in the back, basically you can allow your rear passengers to sleep. You can allow them to do what you want, but you, you can allow them to listen to their own music without you having to li not listen to your own music, which is kind of cool. Now, while we're here, if they want to listen to their music from the back out here, then what we can do is we can get the rear passengers um, to pair their phone. You can have the driver's phone paired for Bluetooth audio and as a phone, and the secondary phone can be paired for just the um, just their music. So they could jump in and play their music on the 12 speaker system. Now let's talk about that 12 speaker system. 12 speakers in this car, ooh, bad white balance. Uh, 12 speakers in this car, and you have what's called Clarify Audio with a quantum sound system. Long story short, it's a Harman Kardon system. It basically takes the compressed music data and rebuilds it um, so it sounds really clear. Long story short, the technical way that this works is it makes your music really clear, really clear, crisp, perfect highs, perfect lows. It sounds pretty good. It sounds really good. And again, you get 12 speakers throughout the whole car. All right, let's go back here. There's a lot more I can show you here. Of course, satellite radio, we know about that. Uh, coming down here, I want to scroll through this big panel here has a nice texture to it kind of looks plain a little bit Maybe you don't like the look of that Push that up and you've got a spot to put your phone to wirelessly charge so wireless charging down here and uh, Passenger talk. Can you hear the passengers clearer? Uh, let me clarify that in one second So right here you have these kind of cool cup holders Which they clear this open space for you, but if you need a cup holder bam bam they come out like that. Uh, actually, similar use in the Kia world, you'll see that in something like a Kia Nero. So kind of a cool system there um, where you've got, again, phones hidden. Your cups can even be hidden. Uh, but of course, you can open that up and you've got a lot of space to put some stuff in down there. So somebody asked a great question. Pastor Talk, does it make it easier to hear them? Uh, not so much. I mean, yes and no. When you're facing forward in a vehicle like this, it has a lot of sound deadening insulation. I haven't even shown you the ceiling yet, but the ceiling is a suede microfiber. It's pretty cool. Uh, you can draw lines in it if you want. Uh, I don't know if it, yeah, there you go. You can sort of see. Um, but of course, you write it all the one way. It looks pretty sharp. It feels amazing, but it also works really well for sound deadening. So when I'm facing forward um, to an acoustic windshield, it doesn't bounce the sound back to the uh, third row seats the same way it could. So what you end up with is um, it's very hard for them to hear you on a busy drive. So I'm trying to get the white balance here. There we go. Uh, so what the passenger talk allows is the rear speakers can hear the driver, but of course they're facing forward uh, that you can hear them easier because they're facing you. So that's sort of how that works. Good question though. All right, coming down here. We Did I mention we've got navigation in here? Oops, don't look at me. Well, look at this. Navigation's right here. And of course it goes full screen or you can pull in the side uh, panel there and you can cycle through various things. There's maps, there's everything's 
compass uh, pastor talks you can activate that at any moment uh it's 80 degrees celsius outside right now fahrenheit excuse me not celsius you can switch it to celsius or fahrenheit whenever you want but you can customize this in many different ways you want your radio on here instead and the map on the side you can do that as well so very cool features here what we're going to do right now is we're 20 minutes in we're going to take your questions then we're going to go rear or middle row rear so row seat there's a lot to show you there that you wouldn't expect uh, we're going to go look at the trunk space as well lots to show you so do me a favor guys Hit that like button while you're here, uh, ask your questions, and I'm gonna turn this off for a second. Ask your questions, and if you um, wanna see something, I'll show it to you, of course, and we'll keep going here in a second. So again, lots to show you still, and just gonna jump back over here. You don't wanna look at me, you wanna look at that. Let's take that. So we'll talk about the all-wheel drive system as well in a second here, I wanna cover that in detail, because there's, um, like I said, we're gonna tell you things that you haven't heard before on this. So there we go. This is the first time being here live, but I watch the vids all the time, hey, cool. Uh, when is the 2022 Telluride coming out? We'll talk about that after the 30 minute mark when we can go off topic a little bit. Navigation updates, are they free? They should be. I'll have to confirm that for you, but I believe for 10 years they will be. Uh, just double check with your salesperson on that. I think they are, but I haven't checked that recently with Hyundai. I know on the Kia side, uh, 2020 and newer are free for 10 years. I believe Hyundai is the same, uh, but I'll have to just double check. So again, you can ask your salesperson, but I believe they are free now. Uh, for at least 10 years or so. So great question there. Okay, I'm gonna talk about the all-wheel drive system while you guys are asking a couple more questions. This is a great sheet. H-Track all-wheel drive, 50 vehicle input signals, calculate torque split, and are transmitted and processed 100 times per second. These are the kinds of things we can't show you before the vehicle comes out. So the driver, the th from the driver's side, you got throttle, brake, steering, transmission, drive mode settings, and ESP status. So that's the electronic stability control status. Engine speed, torque, temperature, uh, transmission gear selected, the actual gear, torque converter status, clutch status, electronic stability control, longitudinal acceleration, lateral acceleration, yaw rate, brake pressure, intervention status, friction coefficient, and then of course the outside temperature and even the windshield wiper status will influence all of the all-wheel drive. So if you've ever driven a car like this in the winter, and I have, what you'll notice is, yes, it's, it can do things in the mud and it can do things on the sand. It's got drive modes for that. But where you'll really notice this car is exceptional is in the snow. It really does a good job of 100 times a second being willing to change 50 different inputs um, and make decisions about what it's going to do with your all-wheel drive system. And it's very, very, very good at keeping you traction. Now, I always recommend winter tires in the winter, so that'll help you with the best uh, traction overall. But if you remember nothing else, 50 inputs, 100 times a second, it's monitoring those. And this car is incredible in the snow. It works really, really well. Are we back? Are we back? Did we ever go? I think we're good, right? Somebody let me know if we're still here. I took a phone call by accident there. Oh, I didn't take one, I came through. Somebody let me know if we're still alive, anybody? If you don't want this vehicle trimmed to have sunroof, do you have to make a special request? It will always have sunroof. All right, we're still good. Okay, we, we'll keep going here. Okay, it will always have a sunroof on this trim, so you have to have a sunroof with it, which we'll show you here. Okay, let's hop in the back here. First things first. The rear seats in this model are captain's chairs. You can get a bench across, but not in this trim level. Uh, what you end up with is a, um, the same sort of patterning in the seats right there, and you have the same perforation in the seat. Now, these perforations in the rear seat are usually decoration. They're decorative, but in this car, they're not. They are, whoops, come on, camera. Three levels of ventilated seats, three levels of heated seats, and you've got an automatic temperature control for the rear passengers. So if you've got kids back here who are touching around and playing with stuff, they will not, um, they will, you can let, bleh, you can lock them out of these or you can let them touch that. So if you want them to use the heated seats, heated steering wheel, that's what's one, or heated seats and ventilated seats, they can touch that. But the climate controls here, you can control that from the front or you can let the rear seat passengers control them here. Regular 110 volt there, 115, 12 volt right here. USB ports in the back of the seats right here. And then you've got these, um, these smart designs. So again, these are Napa leather seats. Plastic seats are easy to wipe up if you've got kids and those are easy to wipe clean. Then you've got the pocket here and a little cell phone pocket here. Now remember that cell phone can be paired over here or it can be uh, charged over here. And you can pair that with the audio system from back here and you can make the decision if you wanna play your music or not play your music. Also, I've got your earbuds and everything else. Seats back here, they're really comfortable. You'll notice the sunroof above me. This one doesn't open, but it's well positioned to be right above my head. Uh, headroom is enormous. I can recline and get overly comfortable. 
like really comfortable laid out here soft touch headrests here like everything's just soft touch and really nice um, and of course these seats also move forward and back so I can create a lot of space uh, I'm putting it all the way back right now and I want you to remember that because I will jump in the third row in a minute or so and we'll show you how much space you have even with the seat all the way back a couple other things I really like over here whoops let's flip the camera back to something more presentable than myself You've got these uh, in the door, these window shades, which uh, are easy to click up. The camera kind of compensates for the light in there, but it really just tints those windows or makes them a little darker again. Gives you a little extra, oops, I'm more right-handed. There we go. Uh, easy to put up and down. They go right into the door. Kind of a cool feature there. So what you have on the door here is two different size cup holders and a window switch. And again, the rest of the controls for the rear seat passengers are all in the center. So kind of a nice system there. And I should point out as well, the seats are appropriately high off the ground, which means you have that nice level uh, seating surface there that you can put your leg on and be comfortable with. So the other thing is we've mentioned the ceiling before, you've got the vents up here, you've got the LED lights, which are really uh, white LED. It's really nice to have the bright white LEDs there, uh, really class up the interior, but this darker t kind of uh, tone makes it feel more luxurious. Now, gonna go to the passenger side, jump in from that side before we jump into the rear seats, or sorry, the trunk. Uh, I wanna show you the third row seats in this vehicle because they're really smart in just a couple little features that you wouldn't think of. First of all, it is a three person back seat, not a two person back seat. So it's very minivan like in that sense. You have buttons to move the seats forward. So when I come over here, I'm gonna tap that button. If the passenger seat was a little more forward, it would move a little more forward, but I'm gonna climb back in, I'm gonna grab a little handle. First of all, there's a step here, which you don't actually see. One, two, so I can step there, step there. Now I'm gonna step up here because I'm a fairly tall person, but your kids could easily use this lower step. And then the other thing there is back here, if I flip my camera all the way back to where I came from, there's a little handle right here, which when I'm coming in is a really good place to grab when you're coming in to pull you up and in. And when I'm leaving, this has a little indent down here, which allows me to pull against this to get up and in. Back here, you can see USB ports back here for me as well. Cup holders back here, and it's probably easier to show the other way around. Now, remember this seat that we sat in. Hold on, let's go over here. Come on, camera. The seat that we sat in over here, we moved it all the way back. So again, I could move that forward. I had like, you know, inches and inches of legroom. But if I sit back here, you're gonna notice it's gonna be tight for me, but I will fit as a six, feeder, six footer. Headroom, I have some, not a ton, but these seats can recline a little bit more than they are right now. It's fairly upright. So I've made it as small as it can be back here. Oops, I should flip that back around here. Come on camera, there we go. All right, there we go. So you can see here, there is a bump up and you need to have that bump up here. Now, if I was to choose, I would want this seat just back a little bit further than it is, which it can recline, but I'm gonna show you cargo space in a minute. But I fit here fine and I'm pretty comfortable except for my legs. My legs are a little bit tight. And this is where I definitely recommend having that captain's chair as opposed to the um, as opposed to the bench because my knee can stretch out a little past. If I had to do this, it wouldn't be very comfortable for everybody. Now, this seat can move way forward, but having the captain's chairs, one leg up and sort of spread out to the wide, so not straight forward, but out to the side here towards the driver's side, um, and one Sorry. leg... I couldn't hear what oh, you said. Serious talking to me. One leg goes down the aisle and I've got tons of room to stretch out, which makes the third row comfortable for two adults for shorter trips or three kids for even longer trips. All right, gonna jump out of here for a second. Coming out, you can see it's fairly easy to get out. That was my shoe, not the car breaking. <laughs> my shoe made a weird noise there. All right, let me just jump into the trunk space. Now, the trunk's kind of cool because you can approach the trunk with the smart trunk activated, just stand by behind the vehicle with the automatic um, up, down, the automatic uh, tailgate. You can just stand there with the proximity key in place. It'll blink three times in five seconds and beep, and it'll open up. Now, I don't have that set up right now. So the other way to open it is to do it the old fashioned way and press the button underneath the Palisade logo or hold this button right here. Now, a lot of people ask me a very valid question. Can you set this at different heights? Maybe you've got a fairly low garage. You absolutely can set it at lower heights. Uh, it's very easy to do. We can show you that in a different video. Now back here, we usually do a teddy bear test for luggage. I will tell you right now, um, 
Teddy bear is not gonna fit fantastic in here, but he's gonna have more room than he thinks. The pictures that they show us is two golf bags on top of each other behind the third row seats. And that works quite well. You've also got the ability to fold down any type of seat you want. Third row seats right here, uh, second row seats right there. So we're gonna go left, that goes powered back. Or we're gonna go right. Oops, let me just show you this. Show you what I'm doing here. Right side holding that button, powering it back. Pretty cool. Now we're gonna fold them forward. Again, powered seat, flops. Remember that seat is all the way back. It still clears, no problem. So again, no worries about that. And then the same thing over here, the powered seat here. That's a nice feature. The Telluride does not offer powered seats in the back. So when you're comparing between those two vehicles that are nearly identical, although made in a different country, this is a nice feature. So once that's folded down, you can see that this rear seat space is big. And also you can see that ambient lighting on in there. Uh, this is a big area for rear seat or rear cargo area. So if you only need to take four people, you've now got a massive area. And what do we use to compare trunk space on these videos? We use my friend, the teddy bear. Teddy bear is large, but this trunk is way larger. So the idea with a Palisade is Basically, teddy bear is just absorbed in there. He is a um, very large teddy bear and he's got tons of space. If you can't fit what you're taking behind the middle row seats in this car, then you're probably taking too much stuff. I say that because my wife is a minimalist and uh, likes the minimum of everything. So, big, big trunk space there. All right, we're gonna turn lights on in a minute, but before we do that, we're gonna take your questions. So, last thing we're gonna show you is lighting. We've already been on for half an hour. We'll try to keep it uh, somewhat honoring of your time here. Let's just see if you've got any questions that I should answer. Meanwhile, if you wanna know what we're doing before we go live on YouTube, feel free to follow me on Instagram. I'm not someone who heavily promotes my Instagram account, uh, but it is a way to follow what we're doing before we actually go live. So there we go. All right, leave it on there for a second. I'm gonna see some questions here. Okay, I love to use my panoramic roof. This one's not panoramic, but yes, it is a nice uh, big dual panel roof. How are we holding with inventory? Dealer groups hurting for cars? Yeah, inventory is always tight, but you know what? You do what you can and you know, it is what it is. Okay. Okay. If you don't want this. Okay, so we talked about that. Nav updates. I don't think there's a whole lot of questions in here. Some people don't like sunroofs and that's okay. Can we see the engine bay? Uh, we maybe, yeah. We're gonna try to honor the time thing. So there's a lot of pictures of the engine bay actually online. So I may not go there just because I am gonna show lighting and take a few more questions. So we'll show lighting first. Uh, but yeah, the reason I don't show lighting is because it's usually pretty easy to find that online. Um, lighting is something that takes a little more nuance. Engine bay pictures are usually a quick Google search away. That's just so people know, that's why I don't always show the engine bay. If I have to be tight for time, that's what I do. Can you put a baby chair in the third row? Yes, good question. Uh, let me just show you real quickly. I'll pop the trunk again. The third row seats here uh, do have child seat anchors. Uh, right there. So on the two outside one, those are child seat anchors. That is not. So here and here on this side. And of course the middle row seats as well, child seat anchors, child seat anchors. So you can just not in this seat unless you use the seat belt, which of course is also an option uh, for many people. All right, while we're at the back, we'll quickly look at the rear taillights. There's a lot of lighting going on in this car. So we saw the signal lights there, taillights here, brake lights in the middle there, uh, LED lighting in this car and uh, brake or reverse light is down there. Coming over here, the car is beeping at me for a couple reasons. First one is, it doesn't like that I have the key and it is on. I'm just gonna turn this uh, four-way flashers on as well because I wanna show you this. Again, this isn't gonna show you everything, but what I like about this is, this is really unique. Mirror lighting, you've got this out front, so it's a really different shape. At night, it really stands out. The camera kind of drowns it out a little bit here. And then at the back side of the car, you can still see that really bright LED there, so you've got that. And then at the front, you've got a lot going on here as well. So everything that's flickering does not flicker in real life. It just flickers because it interacts with the camera, but you've got LED signal lights across there. You've got, I think they call them crocodile lights. You've got a little marker light right there. That's just a reflector down there. And then you've got this pretty cool system of this wave of light running down here. And for whatever reason, they just put it in this little spot. You didn't need to do that, but again, it's the little details that this car takes into account. Right now I've got the low beams on. 
So the low beam headlights are right there, projector beam LED lights, so they can get really bright as soon as you get down there. And then the high beams are actually down below it. So nice low mounted lights. And the reason that matters is if you've ever followed a pickup truck with, especially with aftermarket lights or these bright LED lights, some of those lights are way high up and they're right in the back mirrors of cars where these headlights are lower. So you've got tremendous brightness, but you're not gonna be in people's eyes, which is kind of nice to have. So great lighting right there. Let's come back over here. And again, we didn't show you the backup camera on this. It is a 360 camera, which works forward and in reverse. You have that 360 camera, which is pretty good there. And we've gone 35 minutes. So we've kind of gone over time here. Let's just double check your questions here. Uh, da, 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 da. Somebody said, because of the law, I'm not sure what that is. So there we go. Somebody said they missed most of our live. Well, that's okay. We're back tomorrow and you can watch it afterwards. It's not fun being blinded by lights. Exactly. So that's why having them down low is actually a pretty smart way to do things. All right, so we're gonna leave it right there. We were hoping for a few more likes, maybe about four more likes, we'll get to 40 likes while still live. There's 42 of you on, so if you all hit the like button right now, that would help me out. I wanna thank everyone for watching. Again, if you have any questions about Kia or Hyundai vehicles, you can fill us out in the comments below uh, after we're done filming. I still do my best to answer as many as I can there every day. And of course, we have a lot more coming. This happens to be the 2021 Palisade. We will have the 2022 Palisade coming in in the near future, and we will get that in the video bay here as well. Uh, not a whole lot of changes from what I understand, but I haven't examined every single detail like I like to, so we'll update you as we can. This is a really, really good vehicle, worth a test, test drive. And since we're doing Kia and Hyundai, test drive both. Test drive the Telluride as well. Somebody says, would I rather this or the Telluride? And it really depends. I am neutral on both. Um, I, I, they both have their pros and cons. Hey, there's Gabby, she can sell this car to you. There you go. <laughs> Uh, you know, for me, it's a matter of uh, personal taste and I like both of them for different reasons. So um, the powered seats here are pretty cool. The Telluride styling, uh, I like the front end of the Telluride quite a bit. So, you know, it's up to you which one is best for you. Uh, for me, they're both kind of similar. They're both uh, very similar vehicles. Uh, of course, they're made in different plants, which is an interesting way to do similar vehicles. So we're gonna leave it right there. Thanks everyone for watching. Tomorrow, we will be talking about the all new Kia Sportage or Sportage, depending on where you're from. Uh, it is being announced worldwide. I'll have to see when that uh, live or when that reveal happens and we'll do our best to do that in the future or, or talk to you about that one when it comes out thanks everyone for watching hope you have a great day we'll talk to you soon